Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And on this week's Red V TV show, we discuss Matty Lees, Lewis Dodd, and Saints returning to the Totally Wicked Stadium to play Wakefield Trinity this Friday night. So to start us off, there's only one place to go, and that's with Matty Lees uh, putting in probably the best performance of his career in a Saints jersey. He makes 68 tackles, he plays the full 80 minutes, he leads the pack, and he is completely and utterly snubbed by the Man of Steel panel. Um, Conrad Harrell, obviously scoring the opening try and bagging all three points with Ollie Russell and Ash Goulding um, getting two points and one point respectively for the Giants. Um, is the Man of Steel point system broken? Um, I have to say, yes. Um, it rewards big fishes in small ponds who might be the standout player for their team on a weekly basis, um, even in defeat. And they can come away with three points quite often. Whereas the bigger teams in the league, your Saints, your Wigan, dare I say it, your Warringtons, they have quality sprinkled throughout the, the side, which means that the points get shared out um, on a weekly basis, which means that they don't always come near the top of the rankings. Um, what I would suggest should happen would be that every team scores their players three points, two points, one point respectively. And then at the end of the year, um, the panel take the best player from each Super League team and then they are awarded points from 12 down to one to award the player of the year for Super League. Um, the other big news of the week, Lewis Dodd um, has signed with an NRL agent. Um, he has signed with SFX Sports. And the press reports this week are suggesting that he has a move to the NRL in mind. We can't get too stressed about it. Um, he is under contract until the end of 2024. And listen, if his performances generate the interest from the NRL, he'll go with our blessing. Um, none of us want to lose our best players to the NRL and we shouldn't be actively encouraging it. But equally, it is a short career and players will go um, if the opportunity arises and the finances are right. But equally, it could just be a bargaining tool. Um, there are players who don't want to go to Australia, but the last thing you're going to do is walk into the chief executive office and say, I want to play for Saints for the next 10 years because you are limiting your financial power, your bargaining tool um, when it comes to negotiating a deal. So, of course, getting yourself an agent who says they can get you good money in Australia puts you in a better position to negotiate your next deal at the club. Um, one may suggest um, Daryl Clark, who's been linked heavily with Saints, for next season, who wants a two-year contract with Warrington only currently offering one. Who knows? That could just be a way of um, generating Warrington to come up with a better deal for him. Um, it's A lot of it, it could be agent talk, but listen, players will do what is right for them. Um, it is a short career and you can't blame them for that. As it is, Paul Welland's saying today to Mike Critchley and the St. Helens star that He's not too worried. Um, Lewis Dodd's under contract with us until the end of 2024. Um, listen, for, for Saints, we have had 25 years of having our players linked with moves to Australia. A couple have gone, many have stayed. Um, if Lewis does decide that's where his future lies in the future, then we, we move on. Um, we've got a fantastic conveyor belt at the club in terms of the academy. And we bring the best academy players through. They get into the first team and then we put around them signings, external signings, um, either from Australia or around Super League. And, and that's what has kept St. Helens consistently at the top for the last four years. Squad news this week um, as Saints take on Wakefield. Um. Sione Matautia drops out after he went off with a head injury last week after 38 seconds. And also missing out is Wes Bruins. Coming into the squad, 
is Mackenzie Buckley, a highly rated young forward. And Morgan Knowles returns from suspension. And looking at the squad on paper, you have to say that is essentially Saints' strongest squad of the season. Only Sioni, a number 11, and Joe Batson, a number 12, missing out of the 1-17, to um, which means that Paul Wellens is going to have a selection headache this week. Obviously, we're taking on Wakefield. They haven't won a game this season. They've only scored 43 points across six games. This should be a game, if games were won on paper, that Saints will win with consummate ease. It may not always be like that, but with Wigan approaching next week, we just wonder whether uh, Wello will make a couple of changes. I think he'll go strong, um, because obviously we need to build some momentum going into Wigan. And as he said himself today, and in the press, we're, we're not tired at this point of the year. But it is chance to rotate. I know Iggy Parsi was mentioned as somebody who's carrying an injury. If he passes fit... Do you potentially give Matty Lees the week off after he played 80 minutes last week? And it looks extremely likely that George Delaney is going to make the 17 this week. He's had really good rave reviews playing for Swinton. Uh, I think he's had a couple of Man of the Match awards. And for anybody who was at Huddersfield last week, despite not being even the 18th man, he took full part in the warm-up. After the game, he was out alongside the 18th man, T. Ritson, doing the running. And he just looks like someone who's been prepped um, for some game time this week, especially as he was given the weekend off from going out on dual reg. Um, really excited to see him. He obviously made a couple of appearances last season. Once um, a cast in that very young squad that suffered defeat. And then at the end of the year against Wakefield at home where Saints were defeated. Um, so we're really looking forward to seeing how he goes in a strong Saints team. He is obviously... Um, Probably the great hope um, out of the forwards. Um, one would expect him to have a, a really good career at the club and hopefully he can live up to the billing. He's certainly patiently waited his chances. Um, he's doing all the right things and, and I think he'll go well in the squad. Um, Mackenzie Buckley, it's good to see him evolved in the 21-man squad, just giving him a little taste. Um, we watched him in the Academy Grand Final last season against the Leeds Rhinos and, and he went really well. And He looks someone who could also have a future at the club. Um, so the future is bright in terms of forwards coming through big decisions this week for Wello about what he does in the backs um, obviously we had it last week uh, obviously T. Ritson was the man to miss out we just wonder whether you, you, you give um, T. Ritson a game this week and um, whether that means Jack Wells has been possibly given a week off and John Benison going to full back or Will Hopawati um, potentially missing out um, just to get T in that team. Um, I suspect Wello will go strong. Potentially, do you? You could say, do you leave Johnny Lomax out and put Wellsby into the halves? Um, but given it could potentially be Johnny Lomax's 300th appearance for Saints, we wonder, especially with him being on the, the squad photo being used, whether he does play this week. Um, really, really difficult one to see who misses out. If I had to pick a, a side, um, I wonder, obviously, Mackenzie Buckley missing out. Sam Royal maybe missed out. Possibly James Bell with Morgan Knowles coming back. Um, yeah, absolute tough one. In terms of the squad, for Wakefield, obviously, Mark Applegarth, as we've just said, struggling. Six games without a win. And essentially, you, you just wonder where they're going to buy a win from at this moment in time. And they've decided to roll the dice. Uh, Corey Hall um, only signed a contract for them last season. Has been involved in a swap deal uh, for Will Dagger, who has come in from Hull KR. Uh, they need a fullback. He'll go, he'll go straight into the team. And an interesting one in senior has signed on a two year, two year, two week, two week loan. Just interesting to note he isn't in. Um, the squad photo that has been used for Wakefield um, this week. But we just wonder whether he will go straight into that squad on Thursday after scoring against Saints for the Giants last Thursday night. Um, but listen, on paper, that's that 
is a side that shouldn't be competing with Saints and Saints should be winning with ease. And a chance for Saints to try and get their attack back on track. Um, you've got to be looking at a Saints, a Saints by 40 point victory. Um, anything less than that probably will be a disappointment. But listen, we we want to get two points on the board. Sorry, Mark, for saying listen so many times. But we need the main thing is getting the two points on the board, putting in a good performance, and building into that Good Friday game next week. If we can do that and come away without any injuries or any bans, uh, I think we'll be doing well. Yeah, in senior does go straight into that twenty-one man squad. But yeah, no disciplinaries. No injuries, and, and I think we can go into to Good Friday next week against Wigan in what is an absolutely massive clash um, in terms of where Saints will hope to finish inside the top four, um, even at this early stage of the season. Um, and I think that is us done and dusted. So Saints prediction, Saints by 36. Um, we will catch you tomorrow evening for the instant fan reaction outside of the Totally Wicked Stadium. Hopefully, as we celebrate a routine Saints victory and make it seven out of seven losses for Wakefield Trinity. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll catch you tomorrow night at the Totally Wicked Stadium.